So my name is Emma Norella Binti Mananan and I'll be your moderator for today. Firstly, on behalf of the organizers, I would like to thank you all for tuning in this morning. Most importantly, we are so delighted to have our very respected speaker, Professor Sabri Harun, to join us today. For your, info in for your information, Professor Sabri Harun is a professor at Department of Hydraulic and Hydrology, School of Civil Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. He is an expert in resources sustainability, water resources modeling, especially in climate change and reservoir. He have H in that 17 and have various research grants, especially in university and national grants. Published more than 160 papers and journals with 855 citations. Without further ado, please give a warm welcome to our speaker, Professor Sabri Harun. Professor Sabri, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, uh, the moderator, uh, Miss Emma. Uh, I would like to uh, thanks the uh, Jabatan Teknologi Kultura Awam, Faculty Teknologi Kulturaan FTK, to the Dean uh, of Faculty, Professor Maria T.S. Dr. Jumadi, and also all the staff of the FTK. Uh, and especially to the Ketua Program Teknologi Kejutera Awam, Dr. Naramida Hamidon, who uh, uh, organized, I think, uh, just uh, she called me, she invited me to be one of the speakers. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not an expert. The expert are my student. <laughs> okay, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Ashraf al Mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So now let me start my uh, presentation on the uh, climate change yeah? uh, and water resources. I just uh, try to overview uh, on the climate change and also on the uh, modeling. So now I'm sharing. Yeah? So let me start with the uh, first slide. So linking climate change and water resources and overview and modeling. So the uh, introduction. Uh, my, the content of my presentation today will be the introduction, climate change, the assessment of climate change, modeling of climate change, impact on the water resources, uh, these reports. Uh, impact water resources based on modeling and the remarks. Let's we go to the introduction. So I start with the earth sign, earth system sign. Yeah, there are uh, land, air, water, life. So the land known as lithosphere, atmosphere, air, water, hydrosphere, life, biosphere. So earth system sign. Look at how this system interact and how they are influenced by human activities. And then the spheres, so these spheres for spheres interact with each other. And a change in one area can cause a change in another. So the Earth system attraction, actually the four main Earth system include atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, and lithosphere. So the water flow through the water cycle is driven by Earth's external energy, which is the sun. Biosphere, atmosphere interaction, Focus on the source and sink of greenhouse gases, air pollutant, water and energy between us, space and atmosphere. Then the understanding of the interaction among the earth spheres and the event that occur within the ecosystem allow people, expert, scientists to make prediction. Uh, so this is the water cycle. I get it from the... Uh, uh, Primary school, yeah, from the encyclopedia for primary school. So here, uh, the water cycle, there are evaporation, transpiration, yeah, precipitation, groundwater, lakes, rivers, and heats from the sun. So this water cycle closely related to the what we call the water resources. And when 
the uh, student learn hydrology and water resources, they need to uh, have a knowledge on uh, the starting knowledge on the water cycle. Okay. Professor, then, then uh, how we? Yes. Professor, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, but the slide is moving. Not moving. Ah, uh, yeah. We cannot uh, see the new slide. I mean, like the current so this slide. It's still on oh, the moving. first slide. Yeah. Okay, so let's we okay. I'm in my uh here moving. Okay, okay, yes, yes, all right. All right, now everything is good. Yes. Thank you. Make it like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I increase the size. Okay. So uh okay, so we try to link the climate change and water cycle. So the water and weather, the delicate balance between evaporation and precipitation is the primary cycle through which climate change is understood. So the climate change reveals itself primarily through changes in the water cycle as our climate change draw flood, melting glaciers, sea level rise and storm intensify often with a, a extreme or severe consequences. So the climate change adaptation, uh, uh, we we have to build climate resilience in order to achieve what we call the sustainable development goal. Yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, so we go to the um, uh, the interaction between the weather, climates, and hydrology. So the weather and climate. Uh, experience on Earth because of the interaction of the atmosphere with the hydros hydrosphere and geosphere. And then the atmosphere is responsible for the air that trap outgoing infrared radiation to keep Earth warm. Yeah? Climatic factors of importance are precipitation and its mode of occurrence, humidity, temperature and wind, all of which directly affect evaporation and transpiration. Yeah? So the hydrology of a region depends primarily on its uh, climate, secondly on its topography and its geology. So before this, I mentioned about the uh, uh, Earth system. Yeah. So the first slide. So we need to uh, uh, know the interaction between the Earth system, known as the land, uh, lithosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, and also we need to. Uh, have a connection with the water cycle. We have to know the connection and we need, then we know how to do the, what we call the prediction. Yeah. Okay, so now, the uh, actually the, uh, this the uh, <coughs> a weather climate and hydrology, we can uh, have a, a connection or interaction. And also the uh, ocean and climate also, there is a interaction. Yeah, so the ocean interact with climate in many ways. Example is a periodic flip flop between two states. We call it El Nino or La Nina. And uh, for the ocean climate connection, there is a corresponding cycle in the atmospheric pressure difference across the Pacific. We call it southern uh, isolation or ENSO phenomenon. Example of fluctuation in global weather pattern that occur at somewhat cyclic multiple years interval. So the cycle of warm and uh, cold temperature is measured by sea surface temperature or SST of tropical central and eastern Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Then uh, if we have a look on the um, what we call the climatologies. Yeah. The climatologies. So the climatologists and uh, geophysicists, they uh, have evidence on the climate change based on their research. Yeah, so they uh, have evidence for the past climate change based on the analysis of data. Yeah, uh, from natural occurring climate archive, such as the three rings, bit box, natural ecosystem, coral, lake, and marine sediment. So, uh, there are reports on the uh, uh, climate change evidence by climatologists and physicists.
Okay, so uh, for the climate change, yeah, for the climate change, we need to uh, relate with industry, GHG, and climate change. What is GHG? GHG is the greenhouse gases. So the energy sources from us for industry, uh, fossil fuel and radioactive element. So since the industrial evolution, there has been the anthropogenic ejection of GHG in the atmosphere. So the greenhouse gas emission from the uh, burning of fossil fuels, fuels and land use change. Uh, so the land use change, we will experience the deforestation. Yeah. So the last deforestation uh, increased dramatically in uh, 20th century because of the industrial revolution. So the GHG effect in the atmosphere causes more heat is trapped in Earth's atmosphere instead radiating out into the space. Okay, so radiative forcing. In order to carry out the modeling, so we need the climate model and radiative forcing one of the mechanism. Radiative forcing mechanism or climate forcing is the difference between sunlight absorbed by the Earth and energy radiated back to space. So the positive radiative forcing means Earth receives more incoming energy from sunlight that is radiates to space. So the climate model can only simulate temperatures accurately over the past if that GHG yeah, are included as the uh, forcing mechanism. Yeah. Um, for the uh, climate change definition, if uh, we look at the uh, climate change definition, here I just put, uh, I just show the uh, two definition. Yeah. Uh, the first based on the World Meteorological Organization. Yeah. Uh, we call it uh, WMO. Yeah. So the uh, climate change refers to a statically significant variation, either in the mean state of the climate or in its variability, persisting for an extended period, typically decades or longer. And then uh, the United Nations or UNFCC stands for the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So it defined climate change as a change of climate which is attributed directly or indirectly to human activity that alters the composition of the globe atmosphere and which is in addition to natural climate variability observed over comparable time period. So these are the climate change definition. Yeah. So let's we have a look on the uh, uh, climate change, how the fact and evidence just uh, uh, overview. So the evidence for the rapid climate change is can be seen. It's uh, compelling. Eh? We can see it. Yeah. So the global temperature rise. Uh, this glacial, uh, glacial, and then uh, Arctic sea ice, uh, ocean warming, ocean decrease snow cover, extreme event, shrinking ice sheet, sea level rise, yeah, and so on. Yeah. And uh, if we try to uh, overview the climate change, what I mentioned uh, before, that human activities actually and the mass massive utilization have increased the concentration of GHG. Yeah? The, the, the increase in GHG in atmosphere has caused a sharp rise in uh, surface temperature. And then the climate system is warming due to the effect of the uh, anthropogenic GHG emission and other drivers and then the increased temperature affect the atmosphere. So if we look at this graph, it seems that the uh, CO2 emission from 1900 is a significant increase yeah? Yeah, from 1920, 1940 and also here the anom temperature anomaly also uh, after the World War II. Yeah? Uh, then uh, this is the uh, global surface temperature yeah, of the planet has risen about uh, 0 0.9 degrees in 19th century. And uh, this is the uh, what we call the climate change effect. Yeah? So climate change effect not only on water resources, but cause a variety of physical impact on the climate system. So the physical impact of climate change foremost include globally rising temperature. Yeah? And then also here, the causes because of the agricultural practice 
yeah, a massive agriculture practice, deforestation, uh, and then fuel combustion. So it will become the greenhouse gases, global warming, and also the uh, uh, global warming climate change will affect on the environment. Yeah? Here are the list of the effect on the environment. Yeah, that uh, uh, have a connection with the effect on human. Yeah, uh, such as the uh, disease. Yeah, and also the human migration, uh, flooding. Yeah, a uh, crop failure, and uh, the rest. Yeah. So just uh, a brief about the climate change. So now let's we uh, go to the. Uh, uh, the assessment of climate change because when we uh, want to carry out modeling, yeah, we need to know the basic of the uh, climate change, such as the earth sign, system sign, and also the uh, uh, water cycle. And then we need to know what happened actually climate change, yeah, the impact, okay, and then uh, the temperature increment. So let's we uh, look at this assessment of the climate change. So for the climate change assessment, one uh, organization known as the Internal uh, uh, Intergovernmental Panel, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, is the international body for assessing the science related to climate change. So the IPCC was set up in 1980 by the World Magical Organization and United Nations Environment Program to provide policymakers with regular assessment of the scientific basis of the climate change impact and future risk. So we need to refer to the uh, uh, website of IPCC in order to know more about the uh, assessment report. In 2000, I just uh, gave a brief only, yeah? uh, no need to detail in the assessment report. So just a brief. Yeah? So in 2000, uh, the IPCC issues a special report on the emission scenario, we call it SRS, consists of four scenario families to describe a range of possible future uh, condition and it has been used for more than a decade for uh, climate change uh, simulation. And uh, the, uh, the SRES scenario used the letter number combination and in 2013, for 2014, a new uh, uh, collective set of scenarios known as the RCPs has been agreed by climate scientists to indicate the amount of climate forcing. Yeah. So this is the uh, what we call the uh, fifth assessment report yeah, uh, of climate change by FPCC. So the climate uh, change 2014 synthesis report is based on the assessment of the three working group contribution to the fifth assessment report of IPCC. So there are more than 800 uh, experts uh, involved in this. And the, uh, in the fifth assessment report of IPCC, the new future scenario replaced the previous emission yeah, scenario and are called the representative concentration pathways or RCPs. So the RCPs include a wide possible range of social economic development consistent with the radiative forcing paths. So the new forcing scenario in CMP5, we call it the Climate Model Intercomparison Project, CMP5, huh? consists of data about emerging technologies, new socioeconomic data, and observation about the environmental factors like land use and land covers changes. Yeah. So this is the uh, just a brief about the RCP, of okay. the uh, assessment report, RCP 2.6, RCP 4.5, 6.0 and uh, 8.5 yeah okay let's we look at the climate model under the world uh, climate yeah uh, research program we call it wrcp the working group of couple model link wgcm established a couple model cmip as a standard experiment protocol for studying the output of the couple atmosphere atmosphere ocean uh, gcm general circulation model so the program for climate model and the city of Horizon has established a partnership with other data centers so that all the CMP5 model yeah, can be assessed. So there are about 20 institutions for their own model. So this is the SIG assessment report, but unfortunately the 
this CFS report will be uh, finalized in 2020, 2022. Huh? So currently, IPCC is in six assessment cycle and will be uh, finalized in 2022. So now we use uh, assessment report number five. Yeah. And uh, climate change. Yeah. And climate variability. So the climate change may be due to the natural processes or external forcing or uh, to persistent anthropogenic changes in uh, the composition of the atmosphere or in land use. And the climate variability may be uh, due to the natural internal processes. We need this climate system or to variation in natural or anthropogenic external forcing. And then if the climate change and climate variability have implication on our understanding of extreme precipitation, yeah, event and the influences on global and regional hydrologic processes. Yeah. So based on the uh, IPCC, IPCC, so variation in the future extreme precipitation event are linked to the climate change and climate variability. Yeah. So the IPCC has concluded that increases in the amount of precipitation are very likely in the high altitude latitude while decreases slightly in the most subtropical land. So the IPCC report reported that the global mean surface temperature uh, has incre had increased uh, from 0 0.2 at uh, 0.6 degrees Celsius since 1861 to 0.74 degrees Celsius. Then they further predicted increase for the uh, next 100 years, yeah, um, about two degrees Celsius to four degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's we look at the modeling of climate change. Okay, modeling of climate change. So the generally the climate model are used. Yeah, climate model are used um, for simulation of future changes in climate due to increased uh, GHG. So the climate model simulate the processes and interaction in climate system. So many different type of model exist with varying degree of detail, starting from uh, 1890s. 1960s, 1970s, yeah, uh, 1990s, uh, 2000, yeah, 2010. So there are the uh, uh, evolution of the uh, uh, climate change modeling, starting from the energy balance model, atmosphere, ocean, general circulation model, and now Earth system. So we need to know the Earth system sign because nowadays they are dealing with the Earth system model. Yeah. So we need to know the uh, lithosphere, hydrosphere, and so on. Yeah. So let's we look at the modeling climate system. The global climate model have improved greatly over the past 40 years and continue to improve. So the first climate model in 1970s and 1980s included only rain, sun, carbon dioxide emission. So as model uh, become more complex, so they just include more and more. So nowadays, uh, it is in the form of the Earth system sign. Yeah. And uh, here is the uh, uh, GCM, yeah, general circulation model. Yeah. So the GCM are uh, mathematical model generally designed to simulate the present climate and project future climate. So GCM is proposed for the basic mathematical equation to describe atmospheric motion and processes. Yeah, so this is the uh, GCM based on the Earth system, atmosphere, lithosphere, and hydrosphere. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, there are also other GCM known as the AGCM, atmosphere GCM, and OGCM, the uh, ocean GCM. Yeah, and uh, GCM data set we can uh, is available to download. Yeah, okay, so there are many model. This is the uh, list of example uh, here, M5 GCM model. There are more than 20, I think. Yeah, we can uh, download. And uh, need for downscaling, yes. Uh, GCM need for downscaling because GCM are typically run at the cost, yeah, spatial resolution of the order of 150 to 100 at uh, 200 kilometer, and are limited in the ability to resolve important subgrid scale features. So as a result, GCM-based projection may not be robust for local impact studies. So we need the downscaling yeah, 
So here up downscaling, I mean upscaling, this downscaling, uh, up we can call it aggregation, downscale we call it disaggregation. So we have the uh, site here, yeah, and the GCM is a cost uh, uh, resolution, the uh, plus resolution. So we need to downscale to have a good result. Yeah, downscale the hydrology characteristic, uh, topography, and so on. Yeah. So and then uh, climate downscaling, uh, downscaling uh, a climate change model is the procedure of use large scale climate model to make climate prediction at finer temporal and spatial scale to fit the purpose of local level analysis and planning. So two general approach of downscaling dynamical Y output from uh, GCM are used to drive higher resolution uh, regional climate model or RCM we call it yeah so with a better presentation of local but this dynamical load scaling need uh, cost yeah? is uh, expensive and time consuming so normally a uh, student they work with this yeah uh, if they have facilities such as UKM yes they will be available yeah under uh, Professor Padrelin uh, statistical where statistical link are uh, established between large scale climate phenomena and observe local climate. So this is an example of the uh, RCM. Yeah. And uh, CMP uh, overview. Uh, so CMP is the co couple model intercomparison project. Yeah. Uh, it's a standard framework designed to improve knowledge on climate change and for studying the output of coupled atmosphere, ocean general circulation model. So there are uh, many phases of CIMP, yeah? start from phase one to until phase six. Now we use the recent one is a CMP5 and the future will be the CMP6. CMP6 represent a substantial expansion over CMP5 in terms of the number of modeling group participating, the number of future scenarios, examine and number of different experiments conducted. Okay, and then CMP AR, AR6 uh, for the CMP6 will be uh, upcoming in 2022 in AR6. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's we have a look on the uh, climate change scenario RCPs that what we discuss. Yeah, okay, so the RCP mentioned there are four pathways. Yeah, uh, RCPs uh, representative uh, concentration pathways. So there are four. RCP 8.5, the high emission pathway reaching 8.5 uh, W over meter square of uh, radiative forcing by 2100. And RCP 6 for 6 uh, watt meter per second. And the lowest is the RCP 2.6. It's a peaking around 3 and declining to 2.6, that one expected. So if we make it in a form of graph, so it will be like this where the uh, concentration of CO2 for the RCP 8.5 will be the highest and for the RCP 2.6 will be the lowest. And if we uh, uh, integrate, uh, combine the uh, climate change scenario for CMP 5 and CMP 6, so based on the what we call the shared social economic pathway, we call it SSPs. So this shared social economic pathway, it is designed is included in the CIMP6. Okay, you can see here uh, the illustration uh, scenario of CIMP combination CIMP6 and this is CIMP5 in the form of metric. So SSP1 for the uh, CIMP6 for the uh, next 2022. So here SSP1 uh, for the sustainability, SSP2, SSP3, SSP4 and uh, for SSP5, the highest will be the fossil fossil fuel development. Okay, so here for the RCP 8.5 metric for CIMP5. Yeah. Okay, if we look in form of graph, it seems that uh, the new one, uh, the future CIMP6, will give a uh, higher CO2 emission. But CIMP5 for RCP 8.5, lower than uh, the uh, SSP five combined with the uh, CMP five, yeah? So uh, this is the uh, climate change 
assessment. So if we uh, decide to carry out the climate change impact assessment on water resources, on the anything, yeah. So now what we need to do is we need to uh, go, uh, we need to uh, follow the three steps. The first uh, is the uh, uh, climate modeling, global and regional. And then second, tailoring and uh, hydrological modeling. Okay. And then uh, finally, the impact assessment. So here involve the uh, uh, global climate model, uh, GCM, RCM. And then we need to carry out the statistical downscaling, yeah, and hydrologic modeling, yeah. Uh, and then here we need to decide what impact we want to uh, assess: uh, agriculture, water resources, flood. So we can choose the parameters, and also we can add more on the assessment, yeah, adaptation, vulnerability, uh, resilience, and so on, yeah. So this is just uh, to show you the historical climate simulation, yeah. Uh, so for the historical climate simulation need to be the first to make sure that we manage to calibrate to uh, fit the observation and the simulation. And then um, here the uh, climate change projection also. Yeah, After we manage to uh, uh, fit the historical and the simulation, so we can now uh, have a climate projection. Yeah, based on the what developed by the IPCC. So the climate projection indicate with high confidence that extreme precipitation event will become more intense and frequent. Yeah. So that's what uh, the uh, projection normally happen. Yeah. And uh, the uh, uh, in the climate change projection normally the uh, in a projection and that scientists have different level of confidence for different projection so despite the growing evidence that the changing climate will affect the uh, uh, availability and distribution of water resources so some uncertainties remain especially at local basin scale yeah so that what we call downscaling while there is not much disagreement about the temperature increase uh, simulated by different GCM so more variability ambiguity so that is the problem yeah and often trend in extreme, yeah, show a clear direction that trend. So normally people look at the trend, yeah, the trend, yeah. And this is the just an example of global model projection, yeah. A change in a, a annual mean temperature, yeah. So there is a change in a, a change, annual mean temperature for the. Uh, this is projection for 2081, 2100, yeah. And for RCP six at uh, two point six and RCP eight point five, that is a different, yeah. Because this is for lower, and this is for higher, yeah. CO two. And here also the change in annual mean precipitation, yeah. Example for two thousand eighty one two thousand one hundred, yeah. Yes, there is a significant change when we compare between uh, RCP two point six and RCP eight point five. Yes. Uh, drastic change yeah and also uh, just uh, to show you briefly yeah, about the uh, cmp5 model assemble average mean change in frequency of dry days so this is the uh, based on the dry days and uh, now if we are going to carry out the uh, modeling we need to sometimes we need to have uh, this data this an example of data i show you for of gauge base grid data. There are more, actually, yeah. And this is for example of the high resolution satellite rainfall data product. So we need this. Yeah? Normally, if we want to carry out the uh, uh, research on the uh, uh, hydrology, so these are the data we need to have it. Yeah. So just uh, briefly about the uh, climate change report. Yeah. Before we go to the example of modeling, so this the report climate change water management. So climate change impact have direct consequence on water security and conflict. So water therefore serve as ultimate connector in the global commitment towards sustainable future. So we need to relate with the what we call the SDG, yeah, Sustainable Development Goal. Okay, so uh, this is what I just to show you the uh, water as a connector. So water is not a sector actually, yeah? 
the connector and impact induced by climate change touch all aspect of social society, include economic, social, and environment. Yeah. Okay. So we need a strong political leadership. Yeah. So here is the uh, SDG. Yeah. You can refer to the uh, SDG web. Uh, there are about uh, 17 SDG. Okay. So uh, in our goal, in our SDG, we need to uh, we need to um, relate with SDG six yeah, for water and SDG thirteen climate action. Yeah. So the SDG thirteen climate action related to the climate change. So here are SDG thirteen. Yeah. The uh, um, guideline uh, SDG thirteen. Yeah, capacity building to strengthen uh, disaster resilient adaptation. So you can read this. Okay, and uh, this is SDG 30. Recognize that collective action is needed to limit the rise in global mean temperature. So this climate action SDG 13. Yeah. So water and other social economic sectors. Yeah, affected by climate change. So here in the current climate prediction, safeguarding the water we have in the supplies, we need for a global population set to reach 10 billion. So this climate variability and change, eh, interaction between water and other major social economic. And this just uh, to show you the impact on water resources globally based on the uh, uh, global water withdrawal, agriculture, industry, municipalities, and reservoir, and this uh, just uh, overview of the water availability and stress throughout globally, and this the uh, uh, the stress, yeah, uh, okay, and this is the uh, uh, spatial distribution of water related disaster. You can see here, yeah, around seventy four percent of natural disaster between two thousand one and two thousand eighteen were water related related so this what has been reported yeah and also this is the disaster risk reduction disaster means that uh, related to meteorological event hydrological event climatological event yeah so it is uh, quite uh, uh, the event such as the extreme rainfall adaptation This is the uh, UNESCO publication. If you want to know more about the, the uh, uh, climate change and climate, this is the latest launched by the UNESCO. And uh, the MMD, yeah, they have their future projection. Yeah? And this is of the uh, mission temperature anomaly yeah, increasing. And this is the temperature trend. Yeah. Uh, so temperature trend incre increase. Yeah. And uh, the Nahrim, yeah, uh, Professor M. L. Kavas, they also have done study. And what the finding Peninsula Malaysia will face a roaming trend due to temperature increase in Malaysia can affect agriculture and water resources, increase in magnitude of storm. Yeah. And also uh, the project by uh, Professor Fredlin called Cyclic Codexy. So to generate such high resolution product from cost uh, general GCM output, one require a regional climate model. So Pro Professor Prolin, they have a, a RCM to refine GCM output via a technique known as the dynamical climate downscaling. Yeah. So we should know to be consuming a resource expensive. So the Fred Professor Prolin, he lead the project 
known as the uh, cyclic codex C for Malaysia. And the codex, there are Euro codex, there are African codex, there are uh, uh, various codex, and uh, this will be the input for the CIMP6. So CIMP6 2022, they will uh, give input. Let we go to the uh, uh, climate change impact on water resources modeling. Yeah. So this is an example of UTM 2016. Uh, rainfall downscaling projection drop assessment in Balochistan. So he used gauge based graded data. So this is the uh, gauge based predict, uh, predict data he used. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, he used uh, seven uh, CIMPs. There are many CIMPs model uh, in the group. So he just, just uh, used uh, seven CIMP5 GCM for future climate change scenario. So these are the uh, uh, model he used, he test, and he evaluated stability in replicating observed monthly series. And then he used linear and nonlinear yeah, method for downscaling precipitation, that is to downscale. GM precipitation based on the two method random forest and also support vector machine. Yeah. So uh, first, what Dr. Kama uh, did is the the gauge based graded precipitation was used for the statistical downscaling of precipitation from seven CMP five GCM simulation under four RCP scenarios. I mentioned just now there are four, two point six, four point five. Uh, see, uh, five and also 8.5 yeah so in order to assess future clad future change in this spatial temporal pattern so the selected cimp5 gcm simulation are regraded so if the grid is not uh, similar so it's not equal so they, they must be uh, 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 regraded uh, we need to do regraded into a common so the multiple linear regression there are three type a uh, three uh, method uh, of multiple integration, yeah, uh, forward, backward, and stepwise. So he used stepwise uh, to choose the predictors of CMP5 DCM simulated precipitation for each month separately to capture seasonal variability in rainfall. And number four, the uh, multi-model ensemble MME is used to improve the accuracy in projection by reducing uncertainties associated with individual model. Uh, he used uh, RF and SVM random forest and the uh, uh, support vector machine model for the preparation of GCM assemble with selected predictors for downscaling rainfall and then uh, he used quantile mapping yeah, to remove the bias in GCM by comparing the downscale CMP5 simulation with GPCC rainfall and then seek the model and QM bias correction parameter were used for the downscaling of CMP5 GCM projection under that for CIM uh, RCPs, yeah, okay. And the trend annual and seasonal precipitation over the period 2010-2099 were assessed using the trend uh, statistic, main candle and sand slope estimator. So assessment of drop were based on the standard. Uh, we use SPI yeah, for the drop, and the drop during various climatic crop growing season were reconstructed, yeah, at each. GPCC grid point for the uh, period of corresponding season and he uh, plot the what we call the SAF severity on the SPI yeah so this is an example of the uh, result yeah the result of uh, Dr. Kamal yeah and this is the uh, SAF curve severity area frequency curve so in detail you can uh, contact him to have his uh, thesis uh, yeah and the uh, this is the example of future idf curve at the engaged location with climate change factor muhammad nor dr muhammad nor now yeah so development of idf curve for gauge engaged rainfall downscaling projection using cp5 gcm under four rcps he applied by climatic factor ccf yeah, so for the uh, um, uh, JPS, they derive only one CCF, but here he derived based on the uh, shape factor and also the scale factor. There are two um, 
uh, climatic change factor, I think. Yeah. So in detail, you can just uh, refer to his thesis. Lah. Develop IDF for future base of unbeached data. Yeah. And uh, so uh, he used the uh, gauge base uh, graded precipitation data product known as the Asian Precipitation Highly Resolved Operational Data Integration uh, or a product to uh, for rainfall downscaling. So the daily uh, product rainfall data having a spatial resolution for the period. Yeah. So and he select four most suitable for Malaysia. Yeah. In the because there are uh, so many. Uh, it's about more than 20 CMP5 GCM model. Yeah, so he just select four, the most suitable. He need to test all the model. And then the multi-model assemble was developed yeah, using the random forest that what normally use. Yeah. And uh, IDF development, he just test for the uh, uh, bias correction. Yeah, there are four bias correction he try. Yeah. And uh, for the engaged location, he used the remote sensing satellite data. And uh, so the most suitable downscaling method uh, was finally used for downscaling of selected GCM at the spatial resolution of remote sensing data or satellite data. So an assembly of downscale output the selected GCM was used for the assessment of spatial and temporal variation of rainfall and the rainfall extreme index. So uh, the existing IDF curve at engaged location were updated yeah, using the CCF. So the CCF based on the uh, probability distribution, scale factor, and the shape factor. Yeah, there are two uh, coefficients. Yeah. And this is the example of the precipitation data yeah, for satellite and also gauge data. And then uh, this is the uh, downscaling projection future rainfall. Yeah. And this is the uh, development. Yeah. Development of IDF curve at the engaged location, the flow chart. And here just uh, results. Yeah. The detail will be, I should refer to his thesis. Uh, yeah. You can contact him. So this is the spatial distribution of percentage of the um, uh, by, uh, projected by MME mean rainfall for various uh, uh, period under RCP, RCPs. Here, RCP 2.6, RCP 4.5, RCP. That's commonly used for RCP for CIMP5. Yeah, uh, for CIMP6, later on, we need to include SSPS. SSPS. So there are four SSPS also in the form of matrix combined with the uh, CMP5. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, just example. Yeah, show you. Uh, and uh, we have uh, another uh, student, Dr. Salim, from Iraq. Yeah, in the group of water resources, uh, in uh, water resources research group. So, uh, modeling impact of climate change on agriculture water. Yeah, in Iraq. Yeah. So what Dr. Salim did. Uh, Analysis of gridded climate data include regridded and trend analysis, and he used the CP or compromise programming, yeah, to select the best gridded precipitation data. What compromise programming use? It just to identify solution which closest to ideal solution could be linear or could use the Euclidean distance. Yeah, the selection of GCM model using symmetrical uncertainty, SU. So this is a method of filtering. Yeah, to assess similar or unsimilar. Uh, okay, and then a uh, downscaling and projection of rainfall and temperature. Then he carry out the analysis of the agriculture parameter. So the analysis of climate change, yeah, impact on agriculture water demand, spatial distribution, and trend in climate water availability (CWA) and climate water demand, CWD. So the climate water demand, normally we use the uh, uh, the reference crop evapotranspiration, and then we could then uh, look into the crop growth, so we can multiply that by the coefficient based on the crop growth according to the months. Yeah. So uh, now uh, this is uh, just uh, the flow chart. 
yeah, for the uh, uh, work. You can see here he there are four suitable GCM. Ah, uh, hardly, hardly also still applicable. Yeah, hardly HAD. So this is UK model. HAD GM two AO. HAD GM two ES. Miroc five. Miroc ESM for temperature projection. So for temperature projection, this for suitable GCM. But the rainfall projection, the best only two. HAD GM two AO. HAD GM two ES. So if you want to carry out the uh, impact study, so it is uh, uh, better you test all the model and just uh, try to look at whether uh, this model, this group of model is suitable for the temperature projection or, and then this other group, uh, rainfall projection. There are two parameters in the climate change, temperature projection. Therefore, in the climate impact, uh, the uh, model, if you have the model, so the model should have the parameter of temperature and the parameter of rainfall. If uh, there is no parameter of temperature and rainfall, so you unable to uh, project yeah, the impact. So because this is the uh, two parameters closely related to the climate change impact. So what uh, he, uh, what Dr. Salim, yeah, he, uh, the just a uh, brief conclusion. Yeah, uh, I refer to his thesis. Significant uh, decrease in crop water demand. In recent years, negative impact of climate change on CWD in Iraq, yeah, crop water demand. So decreasing trend in uh, future CWA, yeah, in CWD for all RCP entire agriculture region, yeah, okay, and necessary to research for a new strategy, okay, and then uh, this is the uh, reservoir storage, uh, per dam, okay. So this is an example of the dam if we have the dam reservoir we are interested on this and uh, useful storage so this such a storage refer to the uh, uh, for the spillway design yeah for the flood routing so for the uh, uh, reservoir storage this is useful storage for, for water resources and uh, so in the uh, 2016 uh, chairman Mada mentioned that reservoir storage was sufficient and uh, here uh, dr uh, and, and Nurul Nandra Tukimat, 2015, she uh, projected future reservoir inflow. So it is that is uh, uh, agree with what uh, based on this is agree that uh, there is a increasing trend in the reservoir inflow, and also based on uh, Dr. Naramida Hamidon, yeah. So she um, just. Uh, uh, project that the water demand uh, will be decreased. Yeah? And this is the uh, example of the reservoir storage uh, analysis for Sungai Layang Dam. Yeah? Dr. Tamizi, 2014, he carried out the uh, optimization uh, based on integer programming for this uh, uh, Sungai Johor intake, Linggu intake, and Sungai Layang Dam. So what uh, the uh, uh, result is that the the change of pumping volume to Sungai Layang Reservoir, there are two uh, main results. Trend of increasing in future period during SW monsoon, May, September, transition, March, April, and end season. And also trend of decreasing in future period during North in monsoon, November to December. Okay, so during that time, we still use the uh, NCEP. Yeah, uh, NCEP, and we use the Hartley Center General uh, Circulation Model. But now, now we need to use the CIMP5. So we, that's the latest. Yeah, and uh, based on the uh, uh, paper by the Fredelin, yeah, uh, Professor Fredelin and his group, named as the multi model projection of the precipitation extreme in sources essay based on the codex sources essay simulation. Yeah, environmental research as well. So the what he uh, what they get yeah is that the projected precipit sorry the projected precipitation uh, uh, extreme for the 
uh, 21st century, 2081-2100 over Southeast Asia using cyclic codex C. So the simulation of 25 kilometers special solution were examined for emission scenario 4.5 and 8.5. So they use the indicator annual seasonal rainfall total PRCP TOT. Annual seasonal maximum of daily rainfall RX one day, consecutive dry day, CCD, frequency of extreme heavy rainfall, R50. So what they, sorry, what they uh, um, obtain is that the uh, frequency and intensity of extreme rainfall are projected to increase over Southeast Asia. Yeah? And then a decrease in projected uh, dry, uh, PRC, POT, OT over maritime continent. So this means that the dry tendency. And also the uh, CCD is the consecutive dry days to increase 30% under RCP 4.5 and 60% under the RCP 8.5. So sources Asia include Singapore, Malaysia, Filipina, Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, and the others. Yeah. So that's what based on the, this is the latest yeah, uh, publication by Professor Frodelin. Yeah. And uh, I need to finalize my talk today. Yeah. So the, um, what the uh, I can summarize that uh, in general, human activity with larger emission of GSG is the main cause of the global warming and climate change. So that's why we need to refer to the radiative forcing, climate forcing, yeah, based on the GSG. So the IPC is the international body for assessing the science related to climate change. So the uh, we need to refer to IPCC. We cannot have our own. So the Earth system can be modeled and the future climate can be projected. Yes, because now the IPCC decided that the model based on the Earth system sign, uh, this GCM. So linking climate change with impact on water resources is possible with understanding of the water cycle system. Yeah, we need to know the hydrology, Earth sign system, yeah. And uh, in modeling, the result of uh, research and modeling climate change are still highly uncertain for a number of reasons. So some of the main source of uncertainties are future emission scenarios, future atmospheric greenhouse, gas concentration, incomplete understanding of global and regional climate system, pattern scaling method, natural variability, and uncertainties in regional climate change. So the traditional method may not appropriate to predict future flood frequencies because sustainability is dead. So deep, this uh, sentence I, uh, I just get from I just got from the Professor uh, Muhammad Karamos because I invited him in 2009 to uh, uh, give a keynote speaker uh, as a keynote speaker at ICWR 2009, and in his talk he mentioned about this. So I still remember what uh, Professor Muhammad Karamos from Iran uh, mentioned to me. Yeah. So um, now on adaptation, yes, adaptation, we must make sure to reducing vulnerability and we need to uh, link with the SDG. So the climate ad change adaptation, we have to build climate resilience, follow the SDG achievement. Yeah, nature-based solutions such as mangrove protection, protecting shoreline from storm, lake storing large water supply. So these are the key strategies. Yeah. So we need to have reducing vulnerability and building climate change, climate resilience. So these are the two uh, that we need to uh, include in the adaptation. And finally, the final remark by UNESCO, we need to know that we the climate change is not only the drivers yeah so the flowing for drivers have caused uh, the rapid change in water resources so the water resources water quantity are water resources water availability related to water resources water quality related to water resources so what unesco statement here that the water resources uh, are related to the not only the climate change but also the population growth, land use, 
change energy choice and the global poverty. So this is the final remark. And uh, that's all for uh, today. So thank you for your um, attention. And I pass my uh, screen to Emma as the moderator. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the excellent insight, Professor Sabri. Okay. So there are a few questions yeah. from the chat box, so I'm going to read so that you can answer them. Um, from Nadra UMP, based on Professor's idea, how successful the global in controlling the impact of global warming after many ways or methods taken and considered by the many agencies around the world? Is that the question? Yeah. Sorry, I yeah. don't get the question. Uh, or you can open the chat box for the... The chat, uh, yeah, the chat is... Okay, I open the chat. Yeah, chat. Where yeah. is the chat? Just show me the chat. Oh, no, chat, eh? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Oh. okay, show me. Just show me the question. Uh, the moderator. Yeah? It's uh, quite slow. Okay, I repeat. Based on Professor idea, how successful the global in controlling the impact of global warming after many ways or method taken and considered by the many agencies around the world. So there are mean that uh, how to control them by agencies, yeah, climate change. Uh, uh, what is your opinion yeah, about yeah. successful on yeah. how to control yeah. the impact of global warming? Oh, how to control. So to control the impact of global warming, we need, first, we need to uh, study, uh, yeah. We need to understand the, what we call the uh, uh, water cycle. Yeah, we need to understand the earth cycle, yeah, the earth system. So when we know the earth system, we are able to carry out the study based on the modeling. There could be empirical modeling, could be the uh, a complex modeling. So from in the model, there are the parameters. So we can decide which parameters we want to uh, uh, know, which parameters uh, we want to uh, assess. Therefore, uh, based on that parameters, we manage to decide. Yeah? So, for example, uh, uh, so in the uh, climate uh, modeling, uh, there are two parameters. Uh, actually, uh, 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 that the uh, researcher, uh, the, the uh, uh, hydrologist or researcher interested. The first will be the uh, uh, temperature, and the second will be the uh, uh, rainfall. So if we manage to relate the uh, uh, rainfall and the temperature, yeah, I mean that the impact of the rainfall, the impact of the temperature, so then we can uh, uh, assess the scale of the drop, the scale of the flood, uh, so that the flood related to the disaster, the drop related to the disaster. So when we have a drop, it will be closely related to the agriculture. So it will closely related to the water supply. And when we have flood, so we have a problem of, uh, yeah, we have many problems. So the problem, because we have to uh, uh, open the spillway. Yeah, so therefore from uh, that, um, you know, from that the parameters we assess, then we manage to design, to formulate our uh, adaptation strategy. Yeah, we manage to uh, get the adaptation strategy and the adaptation strategy, what are the parameters normally uh, uh, we need to uh, indicate in adaptation strategies? 
uh, those are the resilience, yeah, uh, vulnerability, yeah, reliability, and there are many, yeah. So that's why uh, what what I try to explain that we need to uh, know the system, yeah. If we know the system globally, if we know the system of our us, so we uh, know the mathematics, we know the physics, then we manage to uh, understand, then we know how to decide based on the uh, result of the, our study. Okay, <laughs> okay. So our second question is from another also. So with upcoming oh, CM, okay. mm, with upcoming CM IP6, is it the climate agencies are expecting the carbon dioxide emissions keep increasing into the earth system? Yes, I think so. We yes, have CO2. Uh, so it seems that the uh, we have I uh, assessment report ER5. So ER5, we have um, what I show just now is that ER5 based on the four RCPs. Yeah, RCP 2.6 until RCP 8.5. So it seems that uh, for the assessment report, uh, number six uh, in will be uh, uh, published in 2022. So that the CMP6, it seems that the CMP6, uh, they are dealing with the uh, SSP, the social economic. Yeah? So combining the uh, CMP5 and CMP6, it seems that uh, we have uh, more CO2 emission. I show you now. Huh? So it means that when we uh, put into a model, yeah, it put into the GCM model, or put into model. So what happened when we carry out projection? Yeah, we will have a, a more extreme results. Yeah, I think that what expected. So now it seems that the uh, the euro the euro what, euro codex euro codex african codex so there are so many group and they uh, seem that ipcc they are concerned about the africa because africa is uh, quite serious they experience the climate change so they are really concerned about the result based on the euro uh, the african codex so that from that uh, research so the uh, research of this project they will give input to the CIMP6. So we need to wait, yeah? CIMP6, we need to wait the uh, assessment report number six, yeah? Okay. Lagi ada soalan? You have a... Uh, oh yes, so we are proceeding. So I hope uh, the answer will answer for uh, Nadra questions and we are proceeding for the next question from Fadil is uh, Muhammad, Fadil Muhammad Din remarks from SDGs oh. indicator on climate change and the action plan mitigating and resilient factors for all stakeholders based on global modeling how and why are indicator or element in achieving the target professor why it's a really hard um, question from professor Fazil Madin. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, that sdg sdg we are dealing with two sdg yeah so sdg one also the sdg is the sdg uh, related to the climate change so uh now uh, the sdgs uh, we need to fulfill sdg based on the adaptation yeah. So I think the keywords in adaptation is the uh, uh, resilience, yeah, climate resilience. So we need to find out the uh, uh, find out the strategies, the strategies for the uh, climate resilience. We manage to uh, overcome the impact of the climate, yeah, and then uh, the adaptation strategies should be uh, climate resilience, and then the adaptation strategies they should be. Uh, 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 cons should consider on the uh, impact on the uh, uh, water quality, impact on the water quantity, 
Uh, so water quantity will be related with the draw. Uh, water co uh, quality, uh, so uh, water, yes, water quantity will be related with the uh, draw and the flood. Yeah. So we uh, if we uh, have uh, and then uh, the uh, water quality that closely related to the uh, uh, the uh, um, the river water quality. Yeah, river water quality. And if we have a problem in river water quality, so we also have the problem in water supply. What happened in the uh, uh, Selangor, yeah? So be because of the uh, uh, problem of water uh, quality in the river, uh, and then we have the problem in the uh, water supply because the uh, uh, water treatment unable to uh, uh, treat the water, yeah? So I believe that the water quality also, and what happened the, uh, in the river water quality, uh, not only because of the uh, uh, problem of the uh, discharge from the waste, from the uh, 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 industries, but also because of the climate change. Yeah? So the climate change will uh, increase the temperature. Huh? And also that will, uh, the water, uh, discharge will be uh, decreased. So in, at the same time, the uh, water quality also will be uh, polluted. Yeah? So the river water quality will be polluted. I hope that uh, Prof. Fadil could uh, uh, manage to agree with what I, I mentioned this now. Yeah? Okay. okay. For the last question, it's... Uh which is modeling in assessing, assessing the potential climate change. Why only bodies carbon dioxide instead of other gases element should be in the major contributors such as chlorofluorocarbon, highest potential GHG and CH4 methane? Yes, I agree that. Uh, in the uh, GCM, if you look at the... Uh, GCM model, if we carry out the climate modeling. Yes, in the uh, regional climate model, I believe that in the Earth sign, Earth system sign model, uh, there are various parameters, not only uh, concern about the uh, other gases, but also concern about the social economy, concern about the uh, land use yeah, and the others. I think the uh, main here, the main, the main uh, contributor is the GHG, yeah, greenhouse gas. So the uh, CO2. So the main contributor is CO2. That's why, yeah, that's why in the RCP, relative uh, climate for, for uh, what RCP, yeah? in RCP there are four RCP. So that four RCP uh, related to the CO2 because the CO2 is the main contributor to the uh, uh, GHG effect in the atmosphere. Yeah, so that's, I think, the answer. All right, thank you, Prof. And also last question, last but not least, from me. And uh, my, okay. end, my question is, how can uh, temperature and rainfall can be the most important factor in modeling. How rainfall and temperature? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, contribute factor. Yes. In modeling, yes. In hydrology, uh, in hydrology, you are dealing with the uh, temperature. We are dealing with the uh, uh, rainfall. Because uh, rainfall, uh, yes, related to the flood, related to the drop. And temperature also, uh, if we want to uh, study the uh, drought, yeah, we want to study for the agriculture uh, water supply. So we need to um, uh, estimate the the uh, water demand. So to estimate the water demand, crop water demand, normally we use the, the reference crop evapotranspiration. And then uh, normally the reference crop evapotranspiration or the water demand, there are parameters include the parameters temperature so the temp temp temperature 
uh, is the main uh, parameter for the uh, crop water demand. And then for the flood, the rainfall is the main parameter for the floods. And uh, for the, uh, yes, for the simulation of a uh, uh, spillway and so on. Yeah, so the rainfall. Because rainfall, it will uh, transform to the runoff eh, the, in the rivers. Uh, so that's why temperature and the rainfall are uh, the two parameters uh, commonly in the uh, uh, the uh, climate modeling. Yeah. That's it. Okay. I got it. All right. Thank you so much, Professor Sabi. And after this quick uh, Q and A session. I can uh, conclude that there are a few points that can summarize this talk. So the okay. first one is uh, what is flow through the water cycle is driven by Earth external energy, which is the sun. And the second one in Earth system science, the spheres interact with each other and a change in one area can cause a change in another. And not only that, climate change reveals itself primarily through changes in the water cycle. And water and weather, the delicate balance between evaporation and precipitation is the primary cycle through which is the climate change is known. Um, the other point is, is our climate change droughts, floods, melting glaciers, sea level rise and storms intensify often with several consequences. And last but not least, understanding the interactions among the earth sphere and the events that occur within the ecosystem allow people to make prediction and changing climate change and water resources with the helps of uh, factors that uh, through the modeling Always. All right. So it seems okay. like we have. So it seems like we have come to the end of our talk for this morning, and once again, we'd like to express our gratitude to Professor Sabri for joining us today and providing all students with such great input. So also, we would like to thank the organizers and participants for tuning into our talk. We hope to see you all very soon. And before we end this talk, uh, I would like to ask for all particip uh, participants to open the camera to take a photo together. I guess, Professor, uh, you can uh, stop sharing the, the slide so we okay, can take the picture Thank together. You much, huh? oh. Thank you, UTHM. Thank you, Dr. Narmida. Uh, Emma no Elia, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, oh so I think. Right. Okay. You want to say it? You want to say it? So first, first, uh, okay, wait. Okay. 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 How to unpin? Okay, so I'm going to screenshot. I'm going to take a photo. All right. Our prof. Professor. Uh, professor, are you there? Professor, we will look at a video that we can watch now. Good 
Ada Prof dah keluar ke? Oh. Oh, okay. Prof dah keluar. Okay. Oh, ya. Yeah. Okay. Boleh kita naik gambar ke macam ni? Okay, Tanpa lah. Prof boleh? Baik. Oh, okay. Alright. It's one, two, three. Alright. Next. Okay. One, two, three. Ah, kejap. Nak tanya macam mana? Tak nak nak nampak semua orang eh dalam satu page. Kak. Emma, kita pergi general review. General view? Uh, oh, general review. Okay, yeah. alright. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, lagi satu page. One, two, three. Okay, dah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you semua. Thank you all. Okay, thank you all. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Oh, that's good, so good. There you are. I didn't hear the doctor tadi. I didn't hear the doctor. Ah, okay. There's no background. This background original tau. Oh, no, no, no. Tadi, tadi, tadi. I didn't hear the doctor. Oh, okay. Dah, dah. Okay, dah. Dah, dah. Okay, dah. Okay, dah. Okay, dah. Okay, dah. Okay, dah. Okay, dah. Hello, ambil gambar. Okey, dah. Haa, bagi jauh sikit nanti. Okey, one, two, three, eh, wait. Okey, satu, dua, tiga. Okey, dah. Dah? Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih kepada dua orang, Nur Hamidah. Ada Tuan Hamidah dengan Nia. Terima kasih lah. Terima kasih, Prof, for your time. Okey. Harap jumpa lagi lah. Nanti pergi pagu. Hey, <laughs> Kena cucu vaksin lah baru boleh. Si dekat dah ni UTM. Okay. <laughs> Betul. Okay saya keluar kot. Tak ada apa lah. Eh? Tak ada. Okay. Tak ada. Okay. Okay. So, macam mana nak keluar lah ni. Lift keluar lift. Ni. Yang ada lift. Warna merah kanan tu. Ha. Okay you okay. ada program lain kot nanti. Saya keluar lah. Hmm, ada petang sekejap lagi Terima kasih Doktor